everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over metabolic alkalosis. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about metabolic acidosis. So if you're studying these, be sure to check out the other video because I'm doing a series on acid and base imbalances. So in this video, what I want to do is I'm going to cover what metabolic acidosis is, how it's affecting the body. I'm going to go over the causes and give you a clever mnemonic on how to remember the causes. Then I'm going to go into the signs and symptoms, the nursing interventions, and work an ABG problem for you with a patient in metabolic alkalosis. Now, after this video, be sure to go to my website, registerednursearian.com, and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. A quiz should be popping up or a link in the description below. So let's get started. First thing we wanna do is go over the key concepts of what metabolic alkalosis is. Because if you can understand this, you can understand the causes, the signs and symptoms and everything like that. Because for the NCLEX and as a nurse, you need to know the basics of what's going on so you can provide quality care to that patient and know what to look for. So in metabolic acid alkalosis, we have a metabolic problem going on. In the respiratory, we had respiratory issues. We had CO2 issues, buildup or depletion of CO2. But in metabolic, we're talking about bicarb, HCO3, which your kidneys are responsible for that. So what's happening Whenever a patient is going into metabolic alkalosis, it's usually due to because the body has experienced an excessive loss of hydrogen ions, of acids. So the body has lost all these acids, hydrogen ions, which in turn has increased the bicarb. So whenever you're losing all that acid, the bicarb is going to go up. And it's the opposite in acidosis what happens is you're losing all that bicarb and the acids are going up the acids go up causes the bicarb to go down so this is the opposite or the body has increased in the has increased in the production of the amount of bicarb it has which we'll go over in depth over here and you can see what's happening with each so what happens whenever this happens, the body tries to compensate for that. It's like, hey, we need everything back to normal. So we need some other system in the body to correct this. And what happens is that the lungs start to kick in. And what they want to do is they want to cause hypoventilation because they think that keeping these CO2 levels high, which is an acid, will help balance that alkalotic state you have going on in your body. So it's going to slow down your respirations, hypoventilation, in hopes of keeping that CO2, which is acid, in the body. So they're going to have respirations like less than 12. And in hope of doing that, it's going to make your bicarb come back down to normal. So what's going to happen in the body, this is what kind of labs you're going to have. You're going to have a blood pH, because remember you have an excessive loss of acid, those hydrogen ions, your pH is going to become alkalotic because it's not an acid, so now it's a base. So it's going to be greater than 7.45. A normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. And your bicarb is going to shoot up. It's going to be greater than 26. A normal bicarb is 22 to 26. And your PaCO2 will either be super elevated, because remember, it's trying to keep that CO2 in the lungs, the acid in the lungs to help balance the body out, or it'll be normal. So you have to watch those levels. And a normal PaCO2 is 35 to 45. So let's look at the causes. Now, to help you remember the causes, because on, in nursing school on the NCLEX, it may throw a scenario out at you and say the patient has this condition, this sign and symptoms going on. What do you expect the ABGs to look like? Or something like that. So try to remember the mnemonic alkali. We're in alkalosis. And remember for metabolic acidosis, we remembered acidotic. So for this one, let's remember alkali. Okay, A for aldosterone production, which is going to be excessive. And this is in the condition called hyperaldosteroneism. Now think back to patho. What's happening whenever you got way too much aldosterone in the body? Well, what's happening is that your renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system is being activated and what happens is that on your kidneys you have the adrenal cortex and it starts releasing 
all of this aldosterone. Remember what aldosterone does. It causes the renal, renal tubules to keep sodium. So you're keeping all this sodium in the body, but that causes you to lose all of these hydrogen ions. Also, potassium. So you're losing all those hydrogen ions, and whenever you lose hydrogen ions, remember, when hydrogen ions go away, bicarb increases. So all of a sudden, you have all this aldosterone being pumped into the body, you're, you're keeping your sodium, you're peeing out your potassium, your hydrogen ions, you're getting rid of those, losing all these acids, and the bicarb starts to elevate, and your blood pH starts to become alkalotic. Okay, next one, L, loop diuretics. Any type of diuretic therapy, especially the loop diuretics, which is Lasix, and your thiazides like HCTZ, hydrochlorothiazide. And um, what happens is that the patient just starts urinating all the time and they're wasting from all that urine, all those hydrogen ions um, like chloride. And again, whenever you lose all those hydrogen ions, the bicarb starts to increase. So you start to have alkalotic conditions. The blood pH starts to become alkalotic because you lost all those acids and your bicarb increases. Okay, next, K. Remember the K in alkali ingestion? This is... Um, Patients who've consumed way too many foods um, that are very alkalotic, like baking soda, antacids, milk, things like that. And what happens is that they take those into their stomach, and eat those way too much, and enters the bloodstream and causes it to become very alkalotic because those substances are very alkalotic themselves. Okay, next, the A for anti anticoagulant known as citrate. Citrate um, is actually used in the storage of blood, the blood bags that you get for transfusion. So if a patient gets a massive transfusion of blood and citrate is used as the storing agent, they are at risk for bicarb, which I'll go into why here in a second. And patients who are on continuous forms of renal replacement therapy. This is an alternative form of hemodialysis that is um, a lot more gentler on the patient who may not be um, hemodynamically stable to do dialysis. And um, what's used is citrate as one of the things in that therapy. And what citrate does is the body looks at citrate and it metabolizes it as bicarb. So here's all this citrate going into your body either through the blood transfusion or the continual renal um, therapy replacement therapy and um, your body starts to metabolize that as bicarb so that dramatically increases your bicarb level so any of that okay next L uh, remember this one this is another very 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 important cause um, loss of fluids any severe vomiting or NG suction and these fluids, your, your vomit, um, all that, and your NG, which is your GI stomach fluids, are very rich in those hydrogen ions, like potassium. So whenever you're just getting rid of those, either throwing them up or it's coming through the NG tube, you're suctioning all those out, the patient is very much at risk for metabolic alkalosis because those are hydrogen ions that you're removing from the body. When hydrogen ions leave the body, the bicarb likes to go up. So remember that. And the last one, I for increased sodium bicarb administration. And um, sometimes physicians may order sodium bicarb if a patient's in metabolic acidosis to help stable out that condition. But you can also give them way too much of it and put them in alkalosis. So it's a seesaw of a balancing act. Okay, so how do these patients present? What do they look like to you as the nurse who are in metabolic alkalosis? Um, one thing is that they're going to have bradypenia if the body is trying to compensate. Remember, the body's going to slow down that breathing to keep that CO2 in there, which is acidotic in the body because the body is alkalotic. It's too basic. So the lungs are going to slow down the rate of breathing to conserve that CO2. They don't want to breathe that much out. So you may have respirations of less than 12 breaths per minute. Um, also, you're going to have some symptoms of hypokalemia. And if you notice in a lot of these causes, you're losing a lot of hydrogen ions, potassium. So whenever you're doing that, you're going into hypokalemia. So a lot of your symptoms you're going to be seeing are hypokalemic 
symptoms like tetany, tremors, muscle weakness, um, tired, EKG changes. And remember, we talked about this in the hypokalemia fluid and electrolyte video um, where the patient may have some depressed ST segments, flat inverted, T waves or prominent U waves. So now let's talk about the nursing interventions and work and arterial blood gas problem that you may encounter on the NCLEX exam or on your nursing lecture exams. So what are you gonna do for this patient who is in metabolic alkalosis? Just like metabolic acidosis, you are going to treat the cause because there's various causes that cause this. So if the patient's vomiting, you are gonna give the prescribed antiemetic like Zofan, Zofran, Phenogren to help them stop from throwing up because remember vomit is rich in um, hydrogen ions and you get rid of that you're going to make the body alkalotic and the bicarb is going to go up and stop suctioning especially the NG suctioning you want to remember that because that's a lot of exam questions um, and whenever if they do have NG suction make sure you're watching how much you're removing from the body in the suction container Okay, next, stop diuretics. Um, because those diuretics like Lasix, your loop diuretics, you want to remember that, and your thiazides, if the patient's on that, and their ABGs are showing metabolic acidosis, you want to stop those, and you want to watch that potassium and chloride levels because you're wasting a lot of those hydrogen ions through the urine. And watch their arterial blood gases because, remember, they're trying to keep the PO2, the carbon, I mean, the PaCO2, the carbon dioxide. So um, their levels can go greater than 45. And if they go too high, they may go into respiratory distress. They're going to be bradypenia. They may need to be intubated. So you want to definitely watch those levels. And the doctors, in some cases, may order Diamox. We talked about this in acidosis. Um, Diamox can cause metabolic acidosis because it's one of those carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, which um, reduces the reabsorption of HCO3, which is bicarb. But um, this is actually used sometimes to treat it. But you have to watch out because this is a diuretic and it can cause hypokalemia. So watch that. You want to look at your potassium levels before you give that. So that is some nursing interventions. Now let's work an arterial blood gas problem that you may encounter on the NCLEX exam or in your nursing lectures exams. And um, I'm going to go over if it's compensated, not compensated, how to tell, and things like that. Now I use the tic-tac-toe method on solving arterial blood gases. As nurses, we um, this is a fast, quick way to learn how to do that and I have a video a card should be popping up or a link in the description on the tic-tac-toe method I go in depth how to set up the problems and things like that because it makes working these problems easy okay so let's do this problem okay the bicarb the HCO3 is 42 the pH is 7.6 and the PaCO2 is 53 so let's plug them in our tic-tac-toe bicarb 42 we know a normal bicarb is 22 to 26 this is 42 so this is basic so we're gonna put bicarb under base so HCO3 under here we're going to look at our pH. Our pH is 7.6. We know a normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. So this is acidic. Anything greater than 7.45 is acidic. So we have a tic-tac-toe. What's great about this method is it tells us are we dealing with metabolic or respiratory issue. So we got metabolic because HCO3 bicarb represents metabolic. So it's basic. So we have metabolic alkalosis. Now we need to see if the body is trying to compensate. And remember to do that, the body is going to stimulate the respiratory system to help try to correct that. So we're going to look at our PaCO2 levels and they are 53. Normal PaCO2 is 35 to 45. So it's elevated. So we're going to put it over here because it's acidic, has a lot of um, carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is an acid. So PaCO2 over here. So now is the body trying to compensate? Absolutely. So what it's done is it's slowed down respirations and um, you're having bradypenia, hypoventilation, and you're keeping all that carbon dioxide in your lungs. And it's elevated that in hopes of um, putting some acid in the body to make the conditions more normal. So it's partially compensated. Now it would be fully compensated if it actually got this um, pH 
down to normal. So if the pH was 7.41 and this was still high, then it did it, done what it needed to do. It got the pH back to normal and that would hopefully get that bicarb back down to normal. But this is partially compensated, so metabolic alkalosis partially compensated. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, ple please be sure to check out my other videos on metabolic acidosis and the other fluid and electrolytes videos and don't forget to take that free quiz to test your knowledge on acidosis and alkalosis for metabolic disorders and please consider subscribing to this youtube channel and thanks for watching